welcome to another lap guide video. My name is Bart, and today we'll be taking the FIA F4 car and I racing around the Virginia International Raceway. Here's the whole bar. All right, heading down the main straight now at VAR. Quite a tricky track, this. Uh, first corner, heavy braking zone. On the straight, you can kind of see. I'm just running it close to the inside here. Just shorten the distance a little bit. Um, then let the car go out to the left-hand side of the track. Uh, meet the white line just before you hit the brakes for this uh, two board on the left. Braking, basically at the one board, you'll see. Here, just before it, um, is a pretty good reference. I'm going to be fractionally late on this lap, but at the same time, it is important here to push your entry. Uh, be very late on the brakes in this car, because if you're a bit early, it's quite a long corner. It's very easy to then brake a bit early, you turn in a bit early, you get on the a bit early, and you have some slides on the exit, or you end up out of uh, position um, on kind of the cambered exit you have here, and then you end up on a, a dirty part of the track, which we'll get to in a moment. But main thing is smack the crap out of the brake. It's like a very... Very uh, hard braking zone because it's slightly uphill at this point, so you can really hit the brake hard. You can see almost 100% brake pressure, which is you know as high as you're ever going to hit the brake in this car, at 95, something like that. Um, down to second gear. You can do third. I think second's better um, in these conditions. Maybe if it's grippier, third gear can work. Um, you can see here, even though I start turning in about now, I'm still maintaining quite a lot of brake pressure. So it's important not to uh, drop off the brake too much like we do at some other corners, kind of slowly position the car in, point towards this kind of cambered, grippy part of the track. If you're out here, you never, you can't go straight and turn here. There's, you can see it's dirty and it's crap. So try and be on the inside half of the track. Um, ideally, you can try and get close to the inside curb as well. You can hook it on the inside curb, but for me on this lap, I just focus and go really deep on the brakes. Get on the throttle uh, pretty much as soon as you get stopped in the middle of the corner. Try to avoid going too wide. As I said, that's probably the widest you want to go. This kind of strip of tarmac on the left, it's very bumpy. You take more distance. It upsets the car. It's dirty. So try to avoid that uh, for the most part. Okay, be smooth here. Hold fourth. And this is quite a tricky corner, I think, to get right. Um, very easy to get yourself out of position here. Don't Please ignore this left in terms of don't think, oh, there's an apex or do this for this left hander, especially in this car. Um, just think of it as okay, there's this left hand quarter coming up. This is all part of the entry. So, how do we prepare for that? Could be out here somewhere, you could be here, but I think it's better to just try and stay on the shorter distance a bit, stay on the grippy part of the track. I like to try and get the car lined up towards the edge of this curve here. You can see just meet 
Uh, you want to meet the white line just before the start of this entry curve. And it shouldn't be a very hard break. You see, I barely break into here. Bit of a soft break there. And everything's quite early and soft here. So what I mean by that is it's not stop, turn, go. It's much more, okay, I'm going to kind of just try and not upset the car, keep the platform very stable, not pitch it too much, just be soft on the brakes. Focus on carrying momentum. There's not much of an exit after this corner. Just carry momentum. If you, if you break a lot, they have to come through a little early. That's usually when you get a big moment or get forced wide. Um, and upset the car. So here you can just be quite smooth by being soft on the brakes. Carry the speed. Pick up part throttle. I think this works in pretty much any car here. You can have this dead phase about now where you're like, oh, I want to pick up throttle. I want to keep turning. Or should I keep braking at this point? Or what am I supposed to do? Just pick up part throttle. Um, usually the rear wants to slide here. You've got part throttle. You carry a bit of speed. You start uh, spoiling the turbo. And more importantly, you just kind of settle the rear of the car. So I like to just pick up part throttle for the apex curve here. And once you get past it, you can go to full. Force the car wide. Use all the runoff. This is no off track. Uh, Breaking just after the end of this uh, AstroTurf and before this kind of um, colored tarmac or whatever you want to call it. Breaking. And then into here, very tricky little corner this. We'll get to in a section. Uh, in a second, it's a combination corner, so the entry here is quite important. So we definitely can break later, but it's more important here to make sure we get the car stopped and prepare for what's coming up next. So quite a hard but not very long break here. Very solid hit of the brake, down to third gear, lead out as soon as you get down to third, start rotating the car in. Notice the camera in the road. This is why we're in early. If you go out here, you just kind of end up out of position. You lose the rear, I find. Try to carry more speed or go later. Um, just try and get the car nice and tucked into this inside curb. Again, it's a bit tricky because you don't want to clout the inside curb all over the green, yellow, nice and early because that kind of fires you wide out here. We want to sneak around the back of the curb to position ourselves for this next uh, double right into the left coming up because it's all about getting good exit for the next long straight. So with that in mind, like I said, pretty hard break. Smooth on the rotation. Get the car nice and uh, paired and, and stopped. It's not important to carry speed here. It just isn't. It, it's all about your positioning. Get the car positioned well to the left here. Left-hand side tires on this, um, this concrete curb here. Uh, when you're at the end of the green yellow, that's your, that's your reference there. And you can also see this kind of shaded tarmac as well. Um, if you can try and stay under or stay in line with the left hand part of this, this will allow you to pick up throttle now. And you see, I have a part lift there. Um, maybe you can get it flat if you get it just right, but in, in warmer conditions, it is tricky. But this setup as well, because it's taking quite a bit of wing off. Uh, to be quick on the straights. So this section should be flat or just under flat. Um, you can see I take it flat out here, but um, no, no, there's not too much to really go into in detail, say for these next two rights, because it's all just kind of a result of what happened in the previous left hander. Uh, you run up to the inside curve here, you take more of it, you kind of bounce off, clip in here, use the camber, smooth the wheel, let the car run out. If you drop a wheel on this curb or the dirt, it can be kind of upset the car a bit, so watch for that. Um, get the car in nice and early. This corner is quite easy to take flat out. But like I said, it all comes from here. And it's all about rolling enough speed so you're going fast enough, but um, being able to get to full throw nice and early. And like I said, this should either be flat or just under flat. If it's flat and it's easy, this up right, then you didn't push the left enough. If you have to lift like, to half throttle or something through here, then you need to prepare better. So it's all... It, it, to be on the limit, it has to be just flat. It should be tricky to take it flat. It should never be easy. Okay. Basically, got a straight now. Just try and uh, reduce the, the, uh, the amount of steering lock we're using here. Don't scrub the wheel. Let the car sit on the right-hand side of the truck. Bring the car to the left. Don't really need to use the curbs too much here. I just use the little concrete ones. Smooth. Okay. Not much going on. Just go in a straight line. Bring the car to the right. Make sure you stay on the white line here. It's, it's quite hard to see uh, from the oh, from the um, the cockpit cam in this car over the crest. But make sure you just try and keep the car on the right hand side here. Really, really important to prepare for this quick left. All the way on the right, just a left. This quick left, yeah, just a lift. Um, no brake. 
you can see I'm part throttle, full throttle, and there's kind of this little dip. And you've also got the rubber as well as a good reference for it to turn in. But it, it's early in here. You're, you're in nice and early lift, part throttle. Try and keep some throttle on. It's really important to maintain the speed and not like kind of uh, get the car to snap too much either. Bring the car onto the inside curb. That's what I mean, nice and early. If you miss this curb and the track kind of falls away from here, from you here, if you turn in late or too quickly. Uh, so try and bring it in nice and early. Part throttle. As you leave the inside curb, you can get to full throttle. Let the car run out to the edge of the track. Make sure you bring the car back straight away to the left-hand side. Otherwise, you're going to be out of position for the, uh, the double right here, Oak Tree. So very tricky corner, this. Braking just after this crest. Uh, the main reason for this is because if you brake on the crest, it just kind of locks up and upsets the car. So if we can, try and delay your braking until you reach the top of, uh, top of this. you also got the two board on the left. Pretty easy as references. Braking fairly hard. You can see I'm not braking with massive peak. The reason is because I'm not really straight, this whole braking zone. Braking, maintain decent pressure. Down to third gear. And make sure we get a good exit. So breaking that down a little bit more. Just try and I like to point the car wide for the first phase. Um, kind of so the middle of my car is going to be here, where this tree is, or kind of just to the left of this curb. So that's where I position the car after the crest. Down to fourth, that's how I see the first part of the braking zone, and that's kind of maintaining pretty similar brake pressure all the way through and bleed off a little bit. If you try to maintain the brake here, you won't be able to turn. So I know we talked about this before on some of my, some of my other lap guides, but basically, you've got a limited amount of grip. You can't use it for both braking and turning at the same time. Otherwise, you, you'll exceed the grip and you'll slide. That's, that's how the friction circle works. So uh, to try and make sure we don't slide here, but we're still slowing down the car, we have to reduce the brake pressure as we're putting in lock because the car's starting to be loaded to the side, loaded laterally as we're turning through the corner. I have to come off some of the brake. So just as you go past the curb here, come off the brake a little bit. You also go kind of the way the camera and the... The, the curvature of the track is, is also quite tricky here. Come off the brake a little bit. Force the car out wide. This also kind of helps in a way because it releases the car. Um, it relaxes the car a little bit when you come out of the brake slightly. Um, and it also forces you wider. You roll up, you, you carry more speed, come off the brake a little bit, as you kind of just have to let the car rotate. And also allows you to be wider here and have the car pretty much, you can see this, dirty patches where this darker tarmac is running out almost to the left-hand side curb there. And so you got this down to fourth, drop the brake a little bit. See, I'm to maintain like 20% brake pressure the whole time here, but it's just on the limit of brake. I'm just feeling, like, okay, how much can I get away with without locking the car up? Force the car out wide. Again, this downshift down to third should be quiet. It shouldn't happen until after the curb. Down to third, then use that to rotate the car. And the later you can delay that rotation, so the deeper you can force yourself into this corner, uh, the better angle you're going to get for the exit, the more uh, speed you're going to be able to carry through that right-hand apex, and also you're going to be able to get on throttle early off the straight. Um, and with that in mind, you might think, okay, is it important to break very late then so I end up wide? If you try and break late here, you end up kind of locking up and out of control. The, the biggest thing is, yes, okay, break, try and push your braking, this is the efficient part of the braking phase where I actually just try to stop the car as much as possible. But at this point, like I said, it's more about just carrying speed, positioning the car wide. Down to third, pick up throttle now, run this curb. You can get an off track if you cut it more, but in this car, you don't really want to anyway. Um, I just run right tires on the green and yellow. It's going to bounce a little bit, but just kind of come off the steering as you reach the curb. Try and release the car, use all the runoff. Again, no off track there. And down the big old back straight now. So. No, it's to go through here. Very, very long, straight. Uh, Going to be a great opportunity for overtaking. Uh, just kind of leave the car on the right-hand side of the track. Take the shortest distance to the next corner. Position ourselves nice and early. Braking now. Not until you turn in here, really. So, you see, I turn in at the one board. And my aim is, again, it's a blind corner, so it's a bit tricky, but I'll kind of go forward a bit and then work backwards. So, my aim is to be in this position here. Um, you could say, why don't you want to be on the white line here, but a biggest reason is because it's not worth it. The track kind of goes away from you a bit, but more importantly, um, to do that, you have to slow the car down so much through the previous left-hander, and it also unsettles it. I'd rather have the car straighter for the braking phase. So I'm just trying to get this angle here, kind of um, in line with, that's what I put it, is in line with the end of the curb, 
on the left hand side facing this direction allows us to position for the next bit coming up. So to start that, turn in about the one board. Break pretty much as soon as you leave the white line. It's just after that. You can see I get the turning done. Uh, pay careful attention to the bottom left, by the way, while I do this. Lock on, lock off. As soon as I hit the brake, as soon as I hit the peak pressure on the brake, I try to get some lock off there. Um, you might think, what, what's the point? It's nothing. But every little bit, every degree of steering counts. Every bit of load you can get out of the car. So it's not moving sideways as you hit the brake, counts. Okay, so hit decent brake pressure here, about 60%. As you have to turn through this kink, you're going to have to bleed off the brake pressure. A bit like we talked about in the previous, the double right oak tree. So just, again, keep an eye on my inputs in the bottom left. Just try and bleed off the brake a little bit as we go through this kink. And then you see, I let it turn a little bit, and then I straighten it up again. I'm actually able to kind of maintain the brake pressure again. So I hit brake pressure here. I hit a bit of a peak here, come up the brake a little bit, and hit more brake pressure now. Now I've got in a straight line again. Yes, I've got less downforce at this point, marginally, but the main thing is I've got the car going in a straight line. I'm able to hit the brake more, be more efficient on the brake. So down to third, this last gear change should kind of help you uh, get over this curve as well. Really hook the car in this apex curve. Get it all over this, um, get on the green and yellow, but it's really about taking this concrete curve here. You can kind of hook it around. Part throttle, full throttle. Force the car out. It should be forced up to the edge of the track here. Uh, not too early, but kind of just at the end of this green and yellow bit. Keep the car on the left, because it's going to want to push out to the right-hand side of the track. Let the car run out here. Now we're going to position ourselves to this section. Important to turn in late there, just at the end of that um, previous bit of curving. Okay, so track limits here. Probably the one place you're very likely to get an off track uh, is the middle of the car over this green and yellow. So you can see right on the limit here. So if, if the middle of the halo is basically left of this curb, uh, you'll get an off track. But we need to try and abuse it as much as possible. Really important for the exit here. So you can see I'm just lifting, trying to position the car. And the later you can turn in here, the better as well. The problem is there's a point where you turn in so late you just don't make the corner. But if you can turn in a bit later, you just get a bit of a better angle to open up the last corner. Bit of a lift as I go into here. Uh, that lift, to be honest, is so I can turn in later. Like, I could go in flat, but it just forces the car. The car starts to understeer. It pushes the front tires this way. They start sliding. The car moves in this direction. If I lift a little bit, give up a little bit of time here. Remember, there's no, there's no time game for me to carry more throttle, really. Um, if I could just lift a little bit to position the car, lift a little bit, that'll help me turn the wheel, get it over this curb in this direction, get this angle, which is what I want, uh, to try and open up the corner as much as possible. Get it straight for a moment. Look at my steering, dead straight. This is really important as well. Position the car, lift a little bit, get it dead straight. So when I land, I can hit the brake. A little bit of a brake there, just a short brake now. Off the brake. You have to be very, um, what's the word, efficient and concise uh, when, you, when you do this corner. So what I mean by that is you've got to make sure you position the car in that short period of time and you hit the brake just at this moment where the car lands. If you brake on the curb, it'll cover, kind of upset the car a lot. Um, you can do it, but it's just a bit trickier. And the thing is, as well, you just have a moment here where you can get the wheel straight because you have to start turning this right hander. If you try and carry the brake or you don't kind of get this braking phase right, you're going to start locking up or sliding the tire because um, you're trying to brake and turn at the same time and upset the car. Brake a little bit, off the brake, kind of just a dab of brake there. And again, hook the car up on this right hand curb, uh, the smaller right hand curb here. Get the full throttle, use the camber. It'll sit in the compression. Let the car run out wide. Uh, I'm not a subscriber for running. You can technically carry more speed and the car will go out here. But the way this car works, you'll have a lot of lock on. You'll be full throttle. You'll just be driving the front wheels kind of sideways. So we slide in the front. And you'll lose a lot of momentum and you're taking more distance. You'll be out here, 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 here. And you're also overheating the tires. So for me, this is, this is definitely better. Just the car should be kind of nicely forced out to the limit. Feel the front tires just on the limit there. Bring the car to the right to try and shorten the distance to the line. And that's the end of our lap at the AR. Okay, so that brings us towards the end of the video now. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And you can also find the Coach Dave Academy Discord in the YouTube video description. My name is Bard. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week. See ya.